Hello friends. Today you will find an incredible story of the fight between Mike Tyson and Evander Holyfield. Make some tea and get comfortable. Enjoy viewing. Tyson and Holyfield have known each other since 1984. They met during the qualifiers for the 1984 Summer Olympics. Then Holyfield was accepted into the Olympic team after two victories in a row over Ricky Womack. Mike Tyson, on the other hand, did not make it to the Olympic team, having lost two fights with a very dubious decision by Henry Tillman. In the first fight Tillman even flew out of the ring. Thus, Holyfield went to the Olympic Games where he announced himself by knocking out his first opponent in the 22nd second of the fight. However, the Olympic gold eluded him. In the semifinals, he met with New Zealander Kevin Berry and even knocked him down. However, it seemed to the judge that Holyfield struck after the stop command and Kevin Berry was recognized as the winner. At the award ceremony, Anton Josipovic, who won gold, raised Holyfield's hand and invited him to the first place of the podium, thus making it clear to the whole world that the judicial decision was not legal. Mike Tyson, meanwhile, began his journey in professional boxing, and as we see very successfully, In 1986, Tyson became the youngest boxer in boxing history to win the WBC heavyweight title by knocking out Trevor Burbick in the second round. Holyfield has been very successful in his professional career too. Holyfield defeated Ricky Parkey and Carlos de Leon to win the WBC and IBF titles, thus becoming the undisputed cruiserweight champion in 1988. After that, he moves to heavyweights. By early 1990, Holyfield was on a 23-fight winning streak without a single loss in his career. With such a record, Holyfield challenged Mike Tyson in the middle of 1990, and as a result of lengthy negotiations, an agreement was reached on a fight between them. Mike planned to have one preparatory fight before the fight with Holyfield. His opponent was Buster Douglas, who as we know broke all the plans of Iron Mike. As a result, Holyfield had to enter the ring against Buster Douglas, whom he won by knockout in the third round. After Holyfield's win at Buster Douglas, Mike Tyson's promoter Don King wanted a fight between Mike and Evander Holyfield, but Holyfield's managers decided otherwise, and signed a contract to fight George Foreman. Mike could only wait for the winner of this fight. As a result, Holyfield defeated Foreman and it seemed that the meeting between Mike Tyson and Evander Holyfield was inevitable, 
but this event was prevented by the result of the fight that Mike Tyson had one month before the fight between Holyfield Foreman. It was a fight against the Canadian Donovan Ruddick. The fight was very competitive. In addition, the referee in the second round after hitting Tyson in the arm Ruddick counted the fall as a knockdown. But on the replay it is clearly seen that Ruddick fell because he stumbled. In the seventh round, after Tyson's next attack, the referee stops the fight without even starting the countdown. In general, there were many questions about the refereeing of this fight, so a revenge was inevitable. The revenge took place on June 28, 1991. Mike confidently won this fight. Finally, the date of the long-awaited battle was set and even a press conference was held on this occasion. I'm just um, basically happy this moment's here. Um, I'm prepared. I know the champion's prepared. This is a high moment of my life. This is dedicated to a great number of people who I missed, um, who's not with us no more. Um, and I just like to thank the people who supported me after Tokyo to this moment right here. And I won't let you down. Vanders, a very good fighter, extra extraordinary good fighter. He was a brilliant teacher, but it's just I'm the best fighter. And I, I guarantee you, November 8th, I have the championship back on my waist. First of all, I'd like to say I'm honored to be here. I thank God for this day. I thank TVKO for this day. I can thank everybody who put this fight together. I thank Tyson for this day. I have a lot of respect for Mike Tyson because he is one of the best fighters. My goal in life is to be my best. Only way I can feel that I'm my best when I fought the best people. Mike Tyson is one of the best and I'm looking forward to fighting him. I'm an undisputed heavyweight champion of the world now. Come November 8th, I, beat on every, I still would beat on the speed of heavyweight champion of the world. However, this incredible fight was again not destined to take place. Mike Tyson goes to jail. Mike holds his first fight after prison on August 19, 1995, in which he simply destroys his opponent in the first round. Time passed. Mike won the next victories in fights. Holyfield had both victories and defeats. And finally, once again, the date of the greatest fight in the history of boxing was set on November 9, 1996. At a pre-fight news conference, Holyfield said that he came for the victory, to which Mike replied the following. Thank you very much. Um, you got nothing coming, man. You got nothing. Nothing coming. I'm gonna like this. I'm gonna have a good time this fight. Finally, on November 9, 1996, an event occurred that everyone had been waiting for so long. Mike started the fight in his usual manner and literally from the first seconds was aimed at a knockout. However, Holyfield was ready for Mike's similar tactics. The most important thing for Holyfield was to adapt to Mike's attacks and keep his cool. During the exchanges of blows, one thing could be noticed. Mike hit hard mostly at short range. The distance of Holyfield's accented shots was a little longer. This gave Holyfield a certain advantage. At close range, he clinched and, as the distance increased, he delivered a series of hits where Mike could no longer reach him. Also, the series of hits of the Holyfield were longer than that of the Mike. If Tyson's standard series of hits was 3-4 to four hits, 
then the Holyfield was 5 to 6 hits. There was a lot of power struggle in this fight, which required good physical condition from both opponents. The fact that Mike had a hard time in this fight can be determined when Mike held Holyfield's hands during close combat, which is completely uncharacteristic of an Iron Mike. By the middle of the third round, Holyfield had fully adapted to Mike's fighting style. In some episodes of The Power Struggle, it even seemed that Holyfield was physically superior to Tyson. There are two main tricks with which Holyfield beat Iron Mike. This is to strike and instantly get close without waiting for an answer. And vice versa, being at close range, deliver a series of blows and break the distance. Also noteworthy is one technique that Holyfield used constantly. He held Mike's neck with his left hand while striking from below with his right. A distinctive feature of this battle was that there were practically no reconnaissance strikes. All strikes from one side or the other were hard and accentuated, which required a lot of energy. Please note that almost every round begins with the most brutal exchange of blows, which is not at all typical for heavyweight fights. The intensity of the attacks both from one side and the other is simply incredible and in general the battle took place at a very high pace. The first wake-up call for Mike came during the sixth round in which Mike was knocked down. After the fight, in one of his interviews, Mike will say that there was no knockdown in this episode. By the start of the seventh round, Holyfield was winning every one of the six rounds it had taken. Mike acted too predictably according to prepared templates. To turn the tide of this fight, he urgently needed to change his tactics to show new unlearned combinations. But Mike did not do this, he was still monotonously going to Holyfield. It became already clear that victory was running away from Mike, and was no need to count on lucky punch since Holyfield controlled almost all attacks and predicted all Tyson's actions beforehand. At the end of the 10th round, Mike misses the most severe blow of Holyfield. Holyfield tries to finish off Mike and only a gong saves Mike from a knockout. Maybe Mike shouldn't have gone to the 11th round, as it's impossible to recover quickly from such missed blows, but Mike would not have been Mike if he hadn't fought to the end. In the 11th round, Holyfield finished what he started in the 10th, or rather in the first round.
Despite the loss of Mike and the fact that the result of this fight has long been known. Watching this fight again and again, I still support Mike and hope that this time he will win. In an post-fight interview, Holyfield thanked God for the victory. You know, it's hard for me to really say how difficult it was because I was led by the Holy Spirit. You know, I, it, it was a different fight for me because it's the first time I just, you know, just kind of prayed. I prayed in, in a corner and I had my, all my corner people praying. You know, and I just thank God for, for all the trainers and my promotion group main events you know that who stuck behind me that you know i was i've been a prayer all my life and they stuck behind me and mike tyson expressed his respect to holyfield so thank you i bear with me there's one guard and i bear with the muhammad the prophet of god um i just want man i i just want to shake your hand man. it's been so long i, I mean i just want to touch you right on that's what i want to see congratulations friends however the story of this great confrontation does not end there ahead bitten off ear incredible second fight and reconciliation subscribe to the channel so as not to miss the continuation of this story if you liked the video do not forget to like it if not write what exactly you did not like and i will try to fix it in the next video i also want to apologize for some of the videos in poor quality i tried to find videos in full hd but i didn't succeed everywhere